Hello, welcome to Notice Book Club. Sup, my name is Maud Garrett. And as always, joining me, Hector Navarro with his deep, I'm going to say that's a cab salve, and uh, Rachel Hine, who, where's your drink? Where's your drink? <laughs> it's right here. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Here's to another week and a fresh Cheers. new book, which we're yeah. going to be doing for the next six weeks, which is super exciting. If you are just joining us, hello, a big welcome to you, Smoochies. Now, this book club is exactly what it sounds like. Look, it's an online interactive book club where we're going to read and discuss themes and topics and characters together with you. If you're live in the chat, a big hello. We love checking in with that chat and we love what you have to say about it. I've always got my eyes on that prize. Uh, but if you're watching us later, Hi, so glad that you're taking the time to get involved in a book club, especially in a pandemic where people get sad. So we bond over books. We're going to be reading for the next six weeks, Patrick Rothfuss's, Rothfuss's this is Name this. of the Wind. Hector, go. Boom. There Boom. There he is. There's Patrick. Patrick right there. There he is. He's walking towards the Name of the Wind. Well, and well. there he is. <laughs> is that what he's doing? That's him. There's the sky. And that's Patrick Rothfuss, and then he's walking towards the name of the wind, which is right there. Oh, and we're we're also doing a giveaway of the tenth anniversary edition of the book. So go to the Nerdist mm. Twitter account to find out details, because I don't know them off the top of my head. Also, we can put it in the chat. It's been a day, y'all. It's been a day. I'm excited to be here with you. Today. So who's Patrick Rothfuss? Well, he is the best-selling author of the King Killer Chronicles series. We say series, it's two, we'll get to that. His first novel though in the series, the one we're reading, The Name of the Wind, won the 2007 Quill Award and was a Publishers Weekly Best Book of the Year. The Publishers Weekly Pop, perhaps. The follow-up book in the series was released in 2011 and it debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It's so good. Together, the two novels have sold over 10 million copies. The third book in the series, though, this, The Door of Stone, and honestly, this story and venture could go on forever as there's so much forecasting in this chapter and chunks already. It has not been released. Yes, it has been 10 years. We will chat about it. It's good writing, though. And if you're on team, I won't start, start something that hasn't been finished. That's fine. But if you're on team, I love great literature and I love being hungry for more. Hey, welcome. So I guess I want to ask this question, Hector and Rach, knowing that there's two books of a series that could potentially, I think could have been like eight books. This is like the next Game of Thrones. Are you okay starting a book? With no without, end in sight. No, with no end in sight. Yeah, because this is a book right here. This is a complete, right? This is it. This is a beginning, middle and end of a story that came out, right? Yeah. This isn't like part one where you get to the end and it's like to continue reading the story, you know, get, go get the other book. That's not what that yeah. is. Flip it's like, the it's like telling They're people not to watch. Millennials. It's like telling people not to watch an awesome movie, something like Speed Racer by the Wachowski sisters that I love just because they never got to do a sequel. Yeah. I feel like I'll be honest with you guys too. When, when the book was chosen, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about the fandom or anything, but it feels like almost every time Nerdist was posting something about the name of the wind, that there'd be one or more people being like, it's not worth it because the third book hasn't come out yet. And they've been very negative about yeah. the, the wait for it that I'm like, well, this doesn't make me feel great at all. And it makes me feel like people are in it just to like get the Wikipedia summary and not to, in, do you know what I'm saying? And not to enjoy yeah. the, and that kind of frustrates me. And I know people like that. And I, I think the way I relate to it is with movies and, and, and I go, look, man, if you just want it spoiled for you, like you can, you know, I know somebody who worked on the show WandaVision. If I really wanted to, I'm pretty sure I could slide into their DMS and go, <laughs> Hey, just tell me what happens at the end. I swear. I'm not going to tell anybody, but then like, I, what would be, you know, what it's the I would, journey. I would ruin it's it for myself. And I'm, I'm into watching that show and I like appreciating things. And anyway, so it, it that's kind of soured me a little bit on the whole mm. world is the way that people it. have, have responded. I know. I know. I know. Easier said than done. I do. I mean, I there are certain fandoms for sure that we're all either aware of or have experienced personally that have maybe not so nice folks. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. I noticed that too. And, and, you know, there's no problem being like, oh, I can't wait for this book to come out. But there has been a lot of like, well, don't worry. It's not like just very mm -hmm. nasty kind of tone. I, it depends for a book series, like, uh, like Hector said, is this a, like, can this be a complete story that continues on in the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mod? I don't know. 
You're not going to answer. <laughs> okay. Either way, I I have I have definitely not watched shows that I know if I hadn't already started them. I've watched plenty of shows that just like what happened? Mm, mm-hmm. Got canceled. Great. Um but if there's something really, you know, that there's a mystery, sometimes I'll hold back on watching something like that. Mm-hmm. But for this, I'm excited to be reading it. Uh, I have plenty of other books to read in the meantime. It's my um, favorite book series. And I think if anyone wants to be like, no, I'm not going to read it. You're missing out. Like, it's as simple as that. And also- Fav- Favorite of all time, Mod. Favorite love of all it. time? Love That's it, love amazing. It, love it. Yeah, great. I'm really- we'll get- We'll get, we'll get to that. I, I definitely want to mention, because Patrick Rothfuss is a friend, and, I mean, the introduction of social media when you are a creator of content can be a living nightmare. And because the books are so good and people are so desperate to get more, that intangible pressure has surmounted on a single individual whose job it is to continue something. Now, the first book was 2007. It was four years for 2011. Should the, you know, would the momentum have been great to kind of continue? Yes. Is writer's block a thing? Absolutely. Writer's block with continual obliterating abuse every single day to do something. Does that take the wind out of the sails? Yeah. Does that make writing fun? Absolutely not. And I think he's been pushed so hard on this to the point where he has to do it, not because he wants to do it, you know? And I think the success of the book, as soon as it sort of like gained traction, it became like a snowball and it's well, just, you know, well, and also if the second one was published in 2011, you know, I don't remember the exact date that Twitter came into our lives, but it is definitely, you know, that I think of, you know, 2011, 2012, as when I read Ready Player One, it didn't pick up on all the toxic fandom stuff because I hadn't been like immersed in it. So it's mm-hmm. also in that time since he wrote the second one, it's just, got lots changed worse and worse yeah. online so i my yeah. heart goes out to him and i you know yeah. writing two amazing high fantasy popular series is already mind-blowing and then yeah. having you, you know, know how many books how many books are in the game of thrones series six uh, books but everybody's six, waiting four, four but everybody's waiting on a fifth five i think five i think, that, I think they're uh, waiting on the six there's six everybody loved those five but the fact that the sixth one hasn't come out yet means that a lot of people are sour on the whole thing. It's 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 a bummer. Oh, yeah. But there's some great comments. I would also say that people don't like all of them. Like every time I've talked to a fan who loves the books, they're like, well, some of them are alone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wheel of time. Uh, anyway, so that's all I want to say. So if we are on Twitter and, you know, Notice is posting about this book and someone chimes in, someone did an amazing job today if you need sort of like a wave of inspiration of how to handle that. And I think it was like your entitlement is like sickening or something. I don't know. It was really well handled where it was just like, calm down. Yeah, Yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, from a post today. So um, yeah, just kind of like champion the fact that it's so amazing to have something. And this book is phenomenal and i am actually super excited to be able to chat with patrick about this but it's only on the guys that we're not going to barrage him and berate him and you know all of that nasty stuff so yeah let's get let's get into this then hey yeah right? I, w- I would like to real quick just read some comments in the chat there's a lot of great positivity yes. as well nyx wing 38 hello it might be too early but i feel like i'm going to give this book five out of five stars nathan s i'm enjoying how the world is getting set up Benjamin Atkinson, hello, I adore the name of the wind. Jamaica Hayes, it's all about the journey. Miss Necromancer, who else is part of Team Patience? Okay, that's, I don't, don't know what that's a reference to, but okay. No, I think just like being Oh, patient Team for- Patience, got it. I'm like, if that's a character we have that, haven't gotten to yet, I don't know. I had that moment in my head like <laughs> two minutes ago, so. Got it, got it. Shroom Sounds says this series is so good. And listen, when, shro- when you're on Shrooms, that's high praise. Uh, Tim, t- Tim and Daisy says it's beautifully written book and worth reading, even if you never read the other books. So oh. there we go. Oh, so since we're doing, um, shout outs and comments and all that, M the cartographer had a couple of weeks off. She's back. So glad she is. Hi, Yay. Michelle. Great to have you back. That's all. Yay. Um, so yeah, I, I, me being the, uh, lit nerd that I am about writing. Um, I really like that this book uses a frame narrative. It's one of my favorite like mm. types of tropes of, you know, story within a story, sometimes within a story, um, where we're starting at this Waystone Inn, which Waystone 
remind me mod boystone because that name pops up right near the end of the section that we were reading and i was like yes it does mm, that, yep. that's why he named it that uh oh. so it's i'm reading it with my eyes i'm reading an ebook is it quoth 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 because it said like quoth but quoth okay like quote quoth right yeah but i chuck okay. a bit of quoth cool 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 uh quoth so at the waystone in this older quoth we learn uh, is recounting his life to a scribe known as the Chronicle, the cro Chronicle. Chronic Chronicler. 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 Yes. Sorry. I'm like Cla Chronicler. Um, and so we hop back and forth between the present, which is written in third person, and the past, which is written in first person. And it reminded me a lot of previous books that we've read together, mm. like Interview with the Vampire. I guess the Gunslinger as well would yeah. count, and Bla Black leopard red wolf mm -hmm. um and i i really like that device and i also like in this so far that sometimes in in a sort of frame narrative structure the like frame parts are really like thin and it's just this first person story i feel like interview with the vampires like that where you mm -hmm. don't get a lot in between and i love that it's not only checking back in with the present but that the present framing move also moves the plot and character development around mm -hmm. um so it's not just as a like mm, we're checking in because this is the device that we're using but it's actually part of the story um especially in uh when we jump back the first time in this section that we read we get uh, some big reveals so i like i like that a lot yeah cool. do you guys like this kind of storytelling or love it well, don't, I don't know if I have strong feelings one way or the other, but I do know that one of my favorite books and movies, uh, Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs does the same thing. It's all oh. John, John Carter being like, let me tell you a story. I went to Mars. This is what happened. This is what happened. I wrote it down in a book. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's great. And uh, it, it, it for me, for this story. It's an origin I, story, Hector. Absolutely. What What is? This, name of the this wind? is his yeah. origin story. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's and true. I felt like uh, I, one of the reasons I was having some difficulty connecting is because of that, like, okay, if this stuff had already happened, then I know that he'll turn out okay. But like I said, that's true with so many other stories, and it's not necessarily going to be the case even with this story. But I did, <laughs> let's just get this out of the way too, full disclosure. I texted, I texted Maude and Rachel uh what yesterday the day before or something yeah, yeah uh when i was about 100 pages in and i was being very snarky and i was like hey so i'm about 100 pages in and then i sent the gif of jeff goldblum from jurassic park like uh do you have do you have dinosaurs on this dinosaur tour because i was like is something gonna happen is something gonna <laughs> is there and fantasy my in this fantasy was... epic <laughs> yeah <laughs> heartbroken and then ma died in a spongebob yeah. squarepants gif but um so and I saw it, That's but right. maybe it was at night. I don't know if I was napping or I fell asleep, but I forgot to text you back. You so were I'm so sorry. mad. You were like, ugh, and then you went to sleep. But um, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, it's it, that, that is not necessarily because of like the framing device. It's just more the, the, the patience, team patience, right? It's just the sort of pacing and everything, which we'll get to talk about later. So me, no problem with the framing device. I think that it, it's, uh, when it works well, it works well. So, and I do like yeah, how we and go back to the bar, which is great. Yes, because I, I, I find that story just as interesting. Um, and mm -hmm. Kit Falbo says narrator should be unreliable when told in first person or third person with a character as the narrator. Yes. If they lack unreliabilities, it can make the story seem disingenuous. And I love that. I love that we, right off the bat, before he tells any of the story in his own voice, we know he's an unreliable narrator. We know he's thinking about what kind of story he wants mm. to be told. Mm. And this is more of an, well, I guess it's not an aside, but I, there's so much in this about who tells a story, what a story means, what is the truth, the what's purpose. hidden in a story or a lullaby. I found that really interesting of him uh, sort of commenting uh, to, I think to the chronicler, mm -hmm. maybe it's too fast, um, that, lots of all, all sorts of secrets are hidden in children's stories and songs. And so I, I have not figured out any of the secrets that are in there, but I know they are, I can tell. <laughs> I just don't know what they are yet. 
I, I really like and the cartographer's point saying I really enjoyed this structure and the pace I feel like the story has room to breathe mm -hmm. and I like that as well maybe Hector is misconstruing that as you know taking its time uh I I see it as um you know the, the first image that came into my mind and I love my analogies is um you know you're about to start a race and you're getting your feet sort of like in mm -hmm. the position and you're about to take off Absolutely. and you're getting comfortable and getting in the zone so that you can go listen i read through tom bombadil i get it okay <laughs> i get it here. we have to we got to really build it up and we have to talk about you know anything to tom bombadil is childhood and rude you gotta really <laughs> i've never heard of tom bombadil in my life but that's oh. such a great name we have to tom. we got to read fellowship of the ring at some point oh. I would bombadil I, I never finish it. Oh. I never finish it. And I'd love to go back and I actually finish it. I never finished it either. I know. I know. I know. Oh, this is when we, the, the Hobbit. That's when we're talking about it. That's when the last time I was like, I don't know this. You're like, yeah, because it doesn't make the movie cut. And I was like, you're yeah. right, I have to read the books. Yeah. <laughs> but I still like yes. that. such a great name. Good it on you. It's great. Thumb bomb, it's great. Anyway, anyway, first section of the book, it introduces us to our protagonist and the world that he inhabits. We know that he goes by the name Coach and that it's not his actual name and that his identity is also all a facade. He has true red hair like a fire burning brightly. <laughs> he runs the Waystone Inn and he's got a monk-like existence. He's kind of just waiting to die. And you can tell that this is a man who does not do boredom well. <laughs> and that he's like his hand has been forced which mm. i love you know again when telling stories that's interesting so at the inn through old Cobb telling the tale of a legendary hero tab uh Tabalin the great to a group of boys we also learn exposition that Tabalin the great wields the name of the wind to escape the chandrian the chandrian are mysterious evil are they demons where do they come from no one is sure they're more of an enigma and a tale than anything else Demons only fear three things, iron, fire, and the name of God. Though Kate keeps to himself, he does have a friend who lives and works with him at the inn. It is the charming man named <laughs> Bast. He's a demon. He's a demon. <laughs> Where was I? Who calls Coat? Uh, yeah, who calls Coat Reshi. Reshi. They discuss a giant black spider that one of the boys fought off and killed a creature called the Scrail. Though Old Cobb and the others believe it's a demon, Coat hints that it's not, oh, but it might as well be. So yeah, we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. After the appearance of the Scrail, um, Coat and Bast are on alert. A caravan of travelers arrive at the inn. One of them, a drunken man, seems to recognize Coat, telling him, oh my gosh, calling him, sorry, both the bloodless recounting his songs and battle stories. Coat's like, oh, I get that all the time. Oh my God, everyone's going to laugh so hard that you also think that. <laughs> Doesn't want anyone to recognize him. So he gets a little uh, cover story so that he can lay low. Mm -hmm. We also meet the chronicler as he's being robbed of his horse and coin in the most sort of like proper and decadent yeah. robbery. So polite. He's like, mm -hmm. well, I love too that he he's clearly very like it was such a good introduction to the character because he's yes. clearly very clever. And as soon as he kind of he negotiates uh, senses with that they're they're more polite sort of robber, he's like, could I trouble you for, you know, just a, a couple little, of pennies? Some of, some of these things, you know. It's some almost like that whole um, you seem a decent fellow. I'd hate to have to yes, kill you. Yes. <laughs> Fellow, I'd hate to die. It's like yeah. that like, sort of beautiful exchange. They're like, this yeah. is just a journal. He's like, yes, it's no use to you. So I'll, I can keep it. And they're I'll like, take okay, it. yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'll take it. But yeah, you're great. Like it really, really well done. Sort of like established because the the art of the first few chapters of the book is instantly establishing these types of characters, which is why we fall into tropes so hard because it does all the thinking and back work for you. Um, the He's being robbed of his horse and his coin, the coin that he hadn't hidden away, that is. Wink, wink. The scribe makes his way through the woods on foot, comes across Coat just before a swarm of Scrail attacks. The chronicler is knocked unconscious and then Coat finishes off the giant spiders. So we're talking about sort of like these first few chapters and how you have to quickly establish the world. We've got old Cobb who's telling like the law and the tales of the land, which establishes, as we were saying, some of the, the key points. Um, we are getting a lot of insight into Coat, uh, who Coat isn't more than who Coat is. Uh, and then, you know, establishing Chronicler's demeanor as well. But what do you think of the world building so far? I think it's pretty interesting. I really like the Chronicler 
introduction, like Rachel, you were saying, I thought that that was great. I also liked that there was a little bit of not full on um, sort of Witcher, different time oh, kind lines of. That, that sync up, but there was an element of like the Chronicler was into the woods and there was a guy who was cloaked and then you would go, go to a chapter and it was coat. And like the, the book eventually was like, okay, they're the yeah. same person. And then that revelation of like, it would it like shifted perspective from like the chronicler's perspective almost to to Quoth's perspective or coat for it for that for then the book to be like so then coat took off the cloak that he had on there's a lot of cloak 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 noises i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that <laughs> but um i'm here going would mine be morgan like if i was to go undercover and i'm not maud i'd be like morgan because it's super close but like not enough uh, that's be, what I, that's like, where i went i'd be like hank yeah yeah, yeah. sure <laughs> rachel would be like raven <laughs> I didn't want to say it because it sounded so goth. It's very goth, yeah. Right. It was just it's like such a, season a one of Titans goth. Myself. Yeah. Also, then I'll yeah, be yeah. Morrigan. The bitch shirt. Anyway. Nice. The bitch. Nice. It's art, so. Nice. It's was Anya Taylor Joy in that movie? Yeah. Which? Yeah. That's a good movie. That's it is a good movie. movie. I, I will never watch it. it. Um, so interesting world building so far. So then we keep going. The Chronicler wakes because he was knocked unconscious. Uh, he tells. Uh, coat that even though he recognizes him he doesn't want any trouble nor the price on coat's head coat recognizes the chronicler the chronicler the great debunker who has apparently been taken under coat's old friend's uh scarpy's wing tension simmers coat does not take kindly to rumor mongers or anyone putting his life in danger and he definitely does not want to tell the chronicler his story everyone thinks quoth is dead and that's exactly how coat wants it but the chronicler persists people think that he's a myth that he never existed that he was just your average killer and that there was a woman before he can finish coat shatters a bottle with his mind oh really okay i didn't pick up on that resigned really? like, yeah his hands like in anger and then like feed away a bottle shatters oh okay um mm. cool. little little telekinesis uses powers great resigned coat agrees to tell his story so that he can control the narrative they have three days to get it all down and the chronicler is like I, I have to go and meet with earl of bayonbrit and uh and so the next day they sit down and quoth's story finally begins yeah quoth's like it's going to take me three days and we're going to start tomorrow not even starting today not even starting right now it's gonna, we're going to start tomorrow what take do you me want? three days and the chronicler's okay. like i'll take it any way i can get it sure no problem i'll move my plans and so, uh yeah so i'm not sure if i've forgotten it every time and relearning it or if i'm only noticing for the first time quoth's a control freak <laughs> oh 100 it has to be in control this is how it's gonna go there is no wiggle room it'll be this and then that is it mm -hmm. so yeah, and he's, he does have a sense of and you see it once we dive into his youth um but he <laughs> is brilliant when i yeah and when i read the the blur before i started it i was like okay somebody thinks highly of <laughs> like it's so the intro but you know the people that like talk the talk and then mm -hmm. they can back it up in right spades? well and That's he's also it. building a legend for himself in the telling of this he wants it word for word um do we feel like the chronicler is basically like a fantasy like journalist who's like supposed to like debut like I don't know. I just got the, or, I mean, I guess there's just a type of, that was a thing that actually happened in the ye olden days. Um, but I really like that he calls him like a rumor monger and, and that the chronicler is like, I've got to get to the truth. Um, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, bring me pictures of spider quote. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Of, squ of squirrels. That was um, just for you. Hector. Thank you very much. Oh, I thought you were literally trying to be Gem, 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 gem. Oh, I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. With the spider, but it was the scrail. I love it. Oh my gosh, that was perfect. Jay, Jonah Jameson. <laughs> That's it. I'm like, if I just keep saying J names and words and sounds, I'll get uh, there. Uh, some more. Some I more. Request like a, a very silly that someone write up something really silly. I'll be like, give me pictures of hot. The, the one I found recently, trying to explain who J Jonah Jameson is to my friend who doesn't under remember anything. And it was me going like, bring me pictures of hot Dumbledore <laughs> from when Jude Law. Yumbledore. <laughs> Yumbledore. Okay, well, all Yumbledore. right. Uh, great comments. Keep popping up in the chat. Um, uh, S. Marcy says, big fan of clever writing. Jamaica Hayes, I love this kind of storytelling. I'm not used to it, which is why I gravitate to it. 
John Adams, love the style. It gave me a chance to get used to what the common people in the world are like before getting into the drama that accompanies being the hero. Uh, Lee says, my DM hates Tom Bombadil. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Miss Necromancer says, this was like a Jane Austen robbery. That, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, the Chronicler robbery. Terribly Cameron sorry to inconvenience you right now. Uh, if, <laughs> if, it, if you would, wouldn't mind, uh, Cameron Brown Don't says- Don't oblige to everything that I request. <laughs> I may have to shoot your horse in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Understood, noted, very good. Cameron Brown says, the foreshadowing payoff in these books is super satisfying. Okay, that's oh, interesting. Yeah. I want to put a pin in that. Yeah, that makes me excited. Yeah, Tim and Daisy says, I've been reading more fantasy partially because of this book club. There you go, me too. Yeah, Absolutely, me too. But questions right. to- to you two and everybody in the chat, how do you feel about the pacing so far? Is it keeping you engaged? I'll really go before first. Before we do that, Ian has a great quote and the quote Ian Powell has suggested, which I love. And I love quotes, so bring the quotes on. Have you come to prove that I don't exist? Ian says that's the best line in that section. Love it, sorry, go Very on. Good. How do we feel about the pacing? Like quite a few. So yeah. I'll go first. It's It's been a little tough for me. It's been a little tough only because it is, uh, first of all, this thick boy right here, I love me a thick book, but you get to a level of thickness where it becomes literally a little cumbersome and uncomfortable to hold, like to-, to Not to, when someone reads to you. Not when someone reads to you, that's what I need. I need to, I need to hold grapes above hey, my look. mouth and have somebody read to me. But what I'm saying hey, is look. it is intimidating to, when you have the physical book, to be looking ahead and to know like, man, 700 pages. Okay, okay, that's a lot. That's <laughs> helping me understand that with only this far in, I can't expect- but we're doing it over six weeks. Absolutely, I, but I'm still saying there's there's still a, there's still an element of my brain that as I'm reading this, I'm going, this visual. is all this is all the setup. This is a visible representation of how this is all the setup up to want, literally I, the last chapter that we read, which was some earth shattering stuff. But it's been a little tricky for me. Go ahead, Mud. Please let me know the point you get to in the story, when even though it's daunting and there's a lot of words in it, when you then realize. Oh God, I wish there was even more. Mm, and I okay. don't want this to end. I'll let you know. I'll yeah. let you know. Because you'll hit that. I hope. I hope. My hope is I, that you'll be like, no, 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 don't end. <laughs> I, I haven't hit that I yet, but I could do three more chapters. <laughs> I will say I hit uh because we read the first uh 16 chapters. Yes. We're mm -hmm. at yes. chapter 17. Yes. I will tell you that. At, by the end of chapter 16, I went, there's a chapter. Okay. I was like, okay, this chapter, which, which where the, the main character describes what happened to his parents. Oh, yeah. And this very whole like, family. the whole, it's, it's like the a Lars trip. Homestead burning trip. Luke Skywalker moment. Mm -hmm. I went, okay, this is the sort of thing I guess I was more expecting a little sooner. Not mm -hmm. to say that the pace is bad, but there's, there were times we're reading the first 131 pages where I was like, ah, there's an, a, a side of me that wishes that Patrick Rothfuss was treating this a little bit like a movie, just to just to kind of get That's us to a little fire. bit more Lots of a. Of this. <laughs> Lots of this. Okay. Also, All it right. was you only ever set up. I think like it's like you're, and this is not a bad thing, but thinking mm -hmm. about a movie and you have to kind of get going in a certain Absolutely. way. You only have, and those storytellers have two hours. Me, totally. like, this is the character. This is leading me down a path without showing too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that totally makes sense and is not there's no wrong way to like read or enjoy and the writing is fantastic yeah. oh, throughout. So good. it's very 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 good it's just Beautiful. you know the the pacing right so far up to this point up to chapter 16 was making me feel a little bit like okay are we spent am i spending too much are we spending too much is this too much setup for me whereas i want a little bit more of an inciting incident a little bit more of what is going to be the overall direction for at least the name of the wind this one book like what is the sort of well, purpose already... of this story ultimately to tell the story yes but what's going to happen at the end of those three days what's going to you know that's sort of like give, give me a little bit more of of what's at stake here I hear you, with you, that. you know what i'm saying just a little bit is, just is a it little like bit. an overwhelming vastness not only because of the book but because of let me tell you the story of my life no mm -hmm. conclusion no what happens afterwards we've just got three days and we've already right. yeah okay i or, get you or, uh, for example for example what's your, not, what's your pool exactly yeah. and i'm not saying that i'm not going to get it in the rest of this i'm saying i'm going to get it in the rest of this section but if the chronicler had sat down and went quoth you must tell me what happened on that day on the mountain. Some, some like definitive, like, well, it's going to take me three days. I'll get there. But some sort yeah, of a, yeah. some so sort of a like. have at the moment are reputations. Why he's right. called 
close right. and bloodless. What does that mean? Why is that an incentive enough? Shattering. It's hinting. It's hinting. Totally. It's all hinting. Yeah. It's all hinting. So instead of dangling a carrot. Yeah. So I, I hear you. you. Both, That's really great feedback. You both are loving the pacing so far. You guys are very engaged. Everything good? Yeah. I, I okay. so far because I think <laughs> each little section had something that interested me or, you know, there were little things um definitely in this next section obviously the name of the inn and the stones that they um encounter some of the riddles and the way that vast you know sort of is like doesn't quite appear what he, he he's not what he seems uh yeah. to quote the swan princess um which and is for me if i could smelt the words and bathe in them that is what i would be doing yeah and it's it, and it's all, yes it's be, it's so beautiful it's beautifully written and there's i love you know legends and fairies and i and, think i think it's safe to say and i know this about you too and if i'm wrong please correct me because i don't want to assume but i think it's safe to say that mod rachel your love one of your love languages is language itself is words yeah. yes word the way breath. that he uses words in this is just it's sumptuous Oh, there you mm. go. Great word. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's such a. Uh, I mean, <laughs> words of affirmation and words. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's I like, you know, you've got yours, your standard lens. I honestly feel like I've been looking through sort of like foggy glasses and like the clarity of language and like mm. the way that he mm. describes sound, touch, uh, science, mm. like everything is done in such like, yeah, I just, I feel like I'm, this is untapping more of like the 10% of the brain that I'm able to use. Gotcha. And the language is touch. The very, <laughs> the very, I mean, you can have more than one love language. That's actually. true. That's true. Um, <laughs> and, but I also think that the writing style in the third person is vastly different from, mm -hmm. you know, Colt Winnie's, yeah. Winnie's speaking in the first person. And also the characters are so distinct. Um, there is definitely a sort of um, cheeky, dark humor to a lot of them in different ways, but they're, mm -hmm. they're all, again, they're introduced in such great ways, but also, and we haven't gotten there yet, but it, when, you know, we have multiple main characters at stake interact with each other in the sort of uh, intermission of, of his story, I thought that that whole sequence was so well done and i loved mm. it so speaking of take it away all about names and i also love that that um kind of the power war, the power of the power of naming something secret names uh there's a whole song in cats about the name uh, and and uh the <laughs> dresden, <laughs> files, the dresden <laughs> files uh having ownership yeah. over someone's name and knowing yes. someone's yeah. name there's mm -hmm. also yeah. There's another one that I can't remember now, but uh, Superman. Superman when he fights Mr. McZipsel Spitlick. You gotta know how to get him how to say do you his say name that backwards. So Mr. McZipsel Spitlick. You have to get him to say his name backwards what? once or twice and then he'll disappear back into his fifth dimension. So slightly slower. Mr. McZips yes Spitlick. Lots of consonants, lots it's like MXY, P A T Who am I? K L K. You are uh you're Ivanka Trump that's been thrown away in the <laughs> in the phantom zone <laughs> i'm in the phantom zone yes I have you haven't seen that meme it was it was after no. uh, uh uh trump uh lost the election that people oh. were putting him in the family like no oh, maybe i did actually anyway no but that's hmm. what i think of when i think of superman still names are important names are important names are important uh so speaking of names both has many names i, I loved his introduction here and now that because when I read the blurb at first, I was like, okay, buddy. But then once you realize that he's telling this sort of epic tale that he wants to be remembered for and is trying to sort of shape the way that, the way that stories are told about him, which stories are very important just within all of the different stories within stories within stories. So he's had many names, the flame, the thunder, the broken tree, which it says, was kind of um, uh, prescient. No, I don't remember the term, but it basically foreshadowing something mm -hmm. um, that I thought was interesting. Light finger, six string, because he uh, plays the lute. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Gvoth the Bloodless, Gvoth the Arcane. Now makes sense that we've gotten past this part. Gvoth the King Killer. Right. That's what the food. whole premise of this is about. I know the, the Chronicles of the King Killer. Yeah. I don't have- know if I should say this, but when with the no, don't say anything. Okay. I don't even think we're gonna meet the king in this one. Probably. And- yeah, pop that in the back pocket. Okay, and also, quote when he's telling the story is like twenty five years old. He looks like, twenty five. Looks twenty five. Looks cool. twenty five. He cool. is definitely not twenty five. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know definitely, 25. but my suspicion is that he is not. I don't know. If he's twelve um, years old, being as smarty pants as he is when he's talking to Ben, I'm like, maybe he did get a lot done by twenty five. I don't know. Sure, but there's also elements where Ben looks much older than he ever mm. has i feel like there's part of the arcane that Sucks maybe mm-hmm. that's just a thing that i think mm. um but his real name both means to know which is a great mm. uh, name for a character who <laughs> seems to know everything and pick up things very quickly so he's one of the is it edema or edema 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 rue edema ru 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 Anyway, troop of court performers. They're not your average minstrels, but they're this grand affair of acrobats and musicians, jugglers and jesters. Uh, and they're, you know, both his family, his chosen family and his father and mother. Um, his father had lured his mother away from a miserable, dreary hell as a noble with sweet music and sweeter words. And I love their relationship and how body and like sex positive they are in front of everyone <laughs> they're just like hey remember when you sweep swept me off my feet so in love i know they're just madly in love and he had a, a very happy childhood learning from an array of teachers including his first real teacher Abin- abinthy abinthy yes. abinthy uh an arcanist who summons the wind and joins kvothe's family troop as an arcanist uh, no, as an arcanist, Abinthi was knowledgeable in all of the sciences, botany, astronomy, psychology, anatomy, alchemy, geology, and chemistry. And because Kvothe is incre- insatiably curious and also only 11 at this point, mm-hmm. um, he asks Abinthi to teach him what he knows of arcany. He is very quick study at anything he tries his hand at and dreams of attending the Arcanum at the university. The two become friends, calling each other Ben and Red. Ben treats Kvothe like an adult, the secret wish that every precocious child harbors. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I remember being like, why does everyone talk to me like a child? And they're like, you're eight. And I was like, ah, (laughs) (laughs) now. And then threw a fit, no. Uh, Ben teaches him many different arcane skills, all centered around Alar, the cornerstone of sympathy. You are going to impose your will on the world. You must have control over what you believe. Mod, can you, I, I, I generally understand kind of what they're doing. They're manipulating like energy and stuff, but can you explain what Alar and sympathy is in a spoiler-free way mm. up to this point? Elemental physics. So basically oh, it's- using... Way simpler than I thought. Could yeah. Control yeah. That. <laughs> It's kind of using sort of like a sympathy is an attachment. So uh, the examples that they give, let's just say I have. But I get the sort of binding of. Yes. Find the similarity. So alcohol to wine. Yes. So there's a connection. So it's kind of like, fuck, it's a little bit like the force in a way. So everything's connected, but you find similarities and the more similar they are, the more that they can have a sympathetic relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's called. And then when you control one, you can manipulate the other. And initially you kind of look at that and you're like, ah, what does that even mean? But then later on, we kind of realize that if you bind your air to the wind, you can suffocate yourself. So uh, for things like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's I guess my it's, question is there's sympathy is sympathy is alar the the noun and sympathy is the the action the action or the verbiage in a way yeah mm. alar is like it's, it's it's like physics um i did not chemistry alar mm. it's like it's that such sort of uh, thing. yeah that was sort of what i was thinking like the when you think about how science some scientists who also are religious think that all of those things go hand in hand, like Mm -hmm. matter slash big bang, 
also mm. some sort of biblical story. Yeah. Interesting. That was my okay. chemistry teacher in high school. That's right. It's also kind of like I, I picked up on it. Like you have to, you have to feel as though you will have dropped it, and then the dropped bullet can jump up into your hand. It's kind of like that, right? Hit it. Got it. Okay, good. Good yep. to go. Cool. Got it. Yep. I'm, re- I'm, I'm all set. All right. Um, Take it away, Mod. Yeah, I just love the science about this. And if you if you are loving this and want another book recommendation, Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn also delves in slight magic, but really fueled mm. by science. So it's I, really clever descriptors. Yeah. I do really. love that. And I, um, I have been, that book has been recommended to me actually several mm. times. And I I'll was put it in the list in a few months. Into fantasy, fantasy, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a little no, bit more steampunk well. fantasy, but yeah. Or even uh, Ninth House, which is by Leia Berdigo, who, who has done the Shadow and Bone series. Um, but there's, it's her more adult work and it's sort of like college Harry Potter with the occult, but it is science-y nice. as well. It's very interesting. It's nice. Two notes that I want to make. One, we are uh, um, using the mentor, the old man, old man, Ben, Ben, Luke, mm-hmm. Ben, same thing. Uh, two, we are um, since initially we had it set that Coat was describing the origin story of Quoth. When you need to kind of have someone else explain something, and it can't be an eleven-year-old who's learning it for the first time, the mentor is a great character to introduce here as well. Mm-hmm. And the way that mm-hmm. the lesson happens is like teaching an eleven-year-old who is smart, which is your average adult reading the book. And so I really liked um, the way that they explained these lessons. I felt it was super clever and Mm -hmm. immediately you just grasp it. You're like, yeah, cool. So like, that's what it is. That's how it makes sense. Give me a few more examples. All right, we're good. Yeah, I understand it overall and how it, how it works. I just, there, I want to under, I'm, I feel a little bit like young quote and that I want to understand it all now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you, when, and if you see more examples of it, it will like really click into place. And then once you've gotten that, there'll be some more magic to learn. So yeah, okay. there's more than one type, different types of magic in this world. That's, yeah. what I, that's also what I was trying so to say. The name of the wind that. has nothing really to do with the law. Sympathy. So sympathy is like learning uh, physics in your class and then you go after drama and that's name of it. Like that's naming things. Mm, okay. Ooh, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Okay. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Cool. So one night, both over here is his parents speaking with Ben. His father's been working on a song about the Chandrian, but all the stories and legends say something different. As he and Quoth's mother, uh, mother pick Ben's brain, we learn some rumors about the Chandrian. So we've heard it already from Old Cobb. Now we're hearing a different version of it. Um, and they're basically trying to piece together information like the law and none of it makes sense some of it makes sense they're trying to understand it now initially this is i'm going off script now initially this is just like the um a a fairy a fairy tale but Mm -hmm. the evidence and like the you know don't step on cracks will break your mother's back kind of thing they're actually finding more and more uh evidence to try and piece this together realizing it's a little bit more than a fairy tale Mm -hmm. um and you know the blue flame uh what happens like you know more than one. yeah so he and Quoth, uh as he's picking ben they are picking ben's brain we learned some rumors sorry uh the, also, then also i i don't think i put this in there because i did not realize when i was working on it that i was going to be relevant in the last chapter but ben is like hey um don't use the name don't use their names <laughs> Stop saying don't say you. their names and yeah, once we the get to the end. The Chandrian, you can't say it. It's like nope. Voldemort, you can't say yeah, it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So there's another also there. Also, there's specific it sound to me, it sounded like names of specific ones because in they the were talking group? right that are yeah, in in because they were uh Volk's mom was basically saying, you know, mm-hmm. my theory is that each one of them has a different kind of power and mm-hmm. they're, you know, when they're in a group then different things happen and it may, it muddles mm-hmm. the story. And we've also been trying to figure out what their names are. And Ben is like, if you want, you can write it down. Don't say it. Uh, yeah, because just like Voldemort, names can summon. Uh, sweet. Uh, so Ben also goes, hey, by the way, your kid's a freaking genius and it's a little <laughs> bit dangerous. And I'm teaching him stuff that 22 year olds are grasping and things that I learned by second year college. He's about to turn 13 and he's picking it up. So this is amazing and it's cool, but uh, you've got to let him do what he wants to do because his brilliance cannot be contained to the um, Edema Ru. So if he decides to become an arcanist, he'd easily be accepted into the university. 
Now, there are lots of hints about Quo's parentage mm. uh, and, you know, that there could be pesky nobility in his blood. How do you think that this book might play into the Chosen One trope? Well, I've actually been looking into Chosen One again. Uh, the Chosen One is the most common fantasy trope that we have when telling a story. There's other ones where it's like, you know, through the eyes of a villain, like Maleficent. Um, mm -hmm. The other one is the reluctant hero. And often the reluctant hero is tacked onto the chosen yes. one. So whether the chosen one wants to be it, like Luke, somewhat Harry, who's excited to get into the world of magic, or the reluctant hero, a little bit like Rand from Wheel of Time, who's like, I'm overwhelmed and this is a lot and I don't know if I can do it. Um, in this and there's, uh, it all kind of stems back to a little bit to Joseph Campbell's theory about the hero's journey. There are these like, there's, in, in theory, six archetypes of stories. And then the ones that we know have sort of been built upon them. And so I would mm -hmm. say reluctant hero and chosen one are, you know, tie. And then you have the heroine's journey, which is like the hero's journey, but with smooching, but in a, sometimes not in a fun way and just uh, a women are, I mean, I'm always pro smooching, but yeah, uh, right, 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 man. Love of smooch. Kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know how, the book's going to play with the chosen one trope. I, I realized pretty early on to reading this book, maybe like page one or two, Patrick Rothfuss is way smarter than me <laughs> and also very familiar with fantasy as a genre and the tropes. And everybody in the chat was telling me like, what's well, going to be, they're going to play, they're going to do opposite Hector. They're going to do opposite of the tropes. So keep that in mm -hmm. mind, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And I'm like, I don't even know fantasy that well enough. So will I be able to appreciate everything on that level? Probably not, but this is another case where I'm along for the ride. And, you know, talking with you guys after we read each one of these sections of the book, that's really going to give me that context of like, oh, okay, that's why what happened is interesting or significant or cool or, or, or groundbreaking, because this is the context you might need. So no idea how it'll happen. It will probably definitely play into this story, though. The chosen one trope? Probably, yeah. I'll tell you what, some of the tropes using uh, Harry Potter and the Star Wars that we've seen so far, and that is the young protagonist whose life has been decided for him. Mm -hmm. uh, in the instance of Harry Potter, you know, this is where you live. You're a muggle, mm -hmm. mundane. Your life is awful. We don't even like you, but this is your existence. And with Luke Skywalker, all he wanted to do was go down to the Toshi station to pick up some power converters, but he wasn't allowed to go to the academy and he had yeah. to stay on Tatooine to become a moisture farmer for his uncle. Yeah. And so it's this journey where it's like, I know that there's something out there that's bigger than what I am. And I, that, you know, I'm destined for something greater than this mundane existence. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're toying around with in this conversation going, even though he's 11 and we're on the road as a singing troupe, dancing and juggling. He has whatever. a happy childhood, but he's still real. He is dreaming of, and can't mm -hmm. blame him, a library with tens of thousands of books. I mean, sign me up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that. It's he's destined for something yeah. bigger than what he's been handed. Ben mm -hmm. gifted Is that a chosen one trope or a chosen one, the confines of the chosen one? Not mm -hmm. necessarily. Because usually with um, technically both Luke and Harry, it's lineage. So it's like Harry realizes his parents True. were wizards and something happened to his parents that is passed down onto him. Uh, and the same thing for Luke Skywalker. Yeah. You know, it, Vader was his father and that, that destiny was passed down to him. Here, we met his parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, did uh, oh no, we did it's not. Not an probably. orphan situation. Are you sure about that? So, but there was a there no, was no. a moment where they talk about where did his red, red hair come from. Also, that the mom was a, a noble, and when uh, um, both is singing a song, just like off the top of his head that he heard. Yeah, take your drink so you don't <laughs> make a face. Mm -hmm. I uh, and she basically. Oh, I say, where's the? Girl? I haven't read the book for like five and a half years. I forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I love it, but I forget everything. So I'm like reading again as if it's like, that's what I like to do. I like to wait long enough so that I forget it. So I'm reading for the first time. Well, so he's singing the song that he overheard, you know, from the, ki the kids in whatever town they're in about Lady Lackless and his oh. mother overhears him. And she says, always think about what you're singing, honey. And Kvothe, again, just like the kind of kid we all know one who's like well what's the difference between you know because he's the sexual sort of innuendo in the plays that we perform versus this song and she says the difference is between saying something to a person and saying something about a person the first might be rude but the second is always gossip mm -hmm. also lady lackless is a real person with feelings that can be hurt Obviously, she's Lady Lackless. The end. I'm done. Oh, nicely done. That makes sense. I didn't pick up on any of that because I'm not smart. So well done. Uh, <laughs> 
this next section of the book was really good because we go back to the bar and Bast comes up from the basement where he was reading a book. But maybe I think he was doing something else. I don't know. He's like, I'm finally reading this book you wanted me to read. Stop interrupting me. He's he's saying I'm studying, but he was just eavesdropping. Eavesdropping. That's right. But he has good ears probably because he's a demon or something. So he comes up and then starts uh, like sniffing around at the chronicler. Like, who's this mother effer? And the chronicler's like, who's this mother effer? And the chronicler pulls out some iron. And then Bast is like, oh no, iron, my only weakness. And then... (laughs) Uh, uh, Quoth uh, introduces them to each other and goes like, you guys should be friends because you guys are each now my friend and we should all be three best friends that anyone should have. And he goes, this is Bast, AKA son of Remen, Prince of Twilight and the Twi'elf Mael, the brightest, which is to say the only student I've had the misfortune to teach. Glamourer, bartender, and not last, my friend. Bast, this is Chronicler, AKA Devin Lachis, a member of the Arcanum and highly skilled in the name of iron be best friends and then they're both their first are like no but then uh quoth is just the best man in the world and he's the smartest strongest sexiest most handsome guy ever that they both are like we should listen to you and then we go back to the rest of the story what do you think of this new dynamic it's fun i like the chronicler and bass more than i like quoth at this point keep it going yeah quote because quoth is uh carries the weight of the world on his shoulders yeah we've now learned that he knows the the heart the heart stone the heart of the stone where you basically just like turn your feelings off wish i could do that that's what quote can do can turn his feelings off or bass can turn yeah, or that's what one of the little bits of uh uh sympathies that ben teaches him is not mentalizing uh, yeah Mm. figuring out how to compartmentalize and sort of look at things logically like yeah that's right a little, little bit um yeah. rachel what happens next well uh both is impatient as many kids often are and he wants to do real magic the whole he the whole reason he said yes to ben joining their troop is that he saw him summon the wind and he wants to summon the wind and cute little Quoth thinks, hmm, I think I figured it out and tries to summon the wind, except he attaches his, the air in his lungs to the wind around him. There's not enough power and he, <laughs> it just rips, yeah, rips. He gets the wind knocked out of him and passes It's like out. attaching a feather to a boulder and throwing the boulder off a balcony. <laughs> and the feather is your lungs. Yeah. <laughs> The, yeah. the air in your lungs yeah yeah um and so when he kind of wakes up and they they get going on the road again ben is pissed and but then he kind of realizes he's like i forget that you're 12 years old and you're not like 18 and this is really dangerous stuff and you're not stupid mm-hmm. but you have to be thoughtful about this you can't be thoughtless think about it <laughs> But then their relationship, even though Ben kind of calms down a little bit and, and they get back to normal, he stops teaching him a lot about this, the uh, sympathies. And there's a little bit of a distance there because I think he mm-hmm. is realizing like, even though we bicker like we're equals and we're not, you're a child, even if you're a very it's smart- of care and he doesn't want to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> that too, uh, as well. And then- The modern version of it. It's so sad that Quoth is like, okay, if I'm just really good at everything and I don't bug him about it and I'm really patient, he'll eventually teach it to me again. And then mm-hmm. Quoth is like, I met this hot young widower. I'm staying <laughs> right here. Peace out. See ya. <laughs> oh, sad. You couldn't have laid him. Oh, such a bu- and you're like, ugh. He's like, I get it. Like, this makes sense for him, but also I'm bummed. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah. then we get to the very, very sad part of the book, Maud. All righty. So without Ben, Quoth focuses his attention on learning. But, you know, like the troop learning. So acrobatic, sword play, the stage, how to behave in a polite in society. But dad doesn't do it. Yes, but he's charming. Wink. Um, but one day when Quoth leaves his parents for some privacy, because they are smooshing. Uh, he ret- well, in this case, yeah, he returns and his whole family is dead. Uh, so still in shock, Foth uses his training to turn off his emotions as he wanders through the wreckage until he sees strangers sitting around a fire nearby. And as he steadies himself against a wagon, the iron wheels crumbled in with the iron wheels crumbled into dust. The wood of the wa- wagon splintered 
he emerges to find a cold, pale man with eyes as black as a goat's. He also has like curly, sort of like white hair, white features, but these very vampiric mm. and um, sharp face. Mm -hmm. if anyone's been playing Baldur's Gate? Uh, I did the the vampire dude in this one. Yeah, Baldur, uh, that I, I feel Baldur. like I've seen the art for that, and I like it. Mm. The cruel. I mean, Chand I like anyone who's a little vampiric. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The cruel Chandrian mocks him. Someone's parents have been singing entirely the wrong sort of songs. I yelled. Don't say the name. Out loud right. at that point. Oh. But a hooded figure, Lord Haliax, Haliax, Haliax. Reminds, reminds the Chandrian that he knows their name and that they are just tools in his hand. What do we get though? All of their names. Thanks, bud. I mean, he's just a kid. Yeah. What kind of friends are going to be? Yeah, and Lord Haliax, re really interesting dynamic. We know that this one, Cinder, is cruel. He is mm -hmm. a pet that has to be pulled back because he just does like cruel, awful, awful shit. But then mm -hmm. Lord Haliax has control of him and he's holding the leash, and also has not necessarily sympathy, but has that vision of uh, how ways should go. It's just matter of fact. Just put him, to, take him to the sleep, the forever yeah. sleep, basically. He didn't not do anything. Talk, uh, not not delighting in it. It's just like. Bad. This is the way that it has to go. Uh, and so you kind of, I don't know if you've gotten this, but you're kind of gathering that Lord Haliax is just using these dangerous creatures as his puppets, but to be able to um, obliterate the story. And that is why over the generations, the story has never been formalized. It's never been able to be produced into this song. They don't want anyone to know whatever the secret is. Yeah. So and I, close, you're done. And I don't, I can't tell if Lord Haliax is actually a part of the Chandrian or is something else, someone or something mm -hmm. else entirely, so. Well, Haliax has got to be the big bad, right? He's like the emperor of this story. He has you to have completely, it's it's very much been shown that he is in control of them. Mm -hmm. I know that he is, but is it that he has found a way to control others like him or that he mm -hmm. has found a way to control certain types? Because we don't really get a great description of him. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. He's, he's shrouded in shadow. Mm -hmm. You cannot see him. He's an absolute. Yeah, that enigma. is very emperor esque. Mm -hmm. But he's like fear personified almost. But the, yeah, the shadows are interesting. Before they can kill him, though, the Chandrians sense something's coming and then they disappear. Quoth straight up in shock, does not know what to do, does not know how to handle it. So he wanders into the forest, plays his father's lute until sleep finally takes him. And then we had to stop reading. I know. <laughs> and it's that section is such a gut punch. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think we should talk about it in the after show oh <laughs> nice, nice. want to hear our final thoughts got to go to the after show <laughs> <laughs> no i just i i just have a lot to say about it yep 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 there is a lot to talk about excited for you to get there your homework for next week though read chapters 17 to 32 stop at 33 after this though so we can talk about what we thought about this where it's going to go how this scene affected us what we think is going to happen we're going to head over to the after show happening on Geek Bombs Discord. If you want access to that, I mean, the Discord, half of it's opened up completely. So you can join any old time and join in the Discord community. Yeah, but yeah. if you want access to playing, watching, and hashtag reading, which is where we're going to be chatting, and the book club voice chat, we're all going to be talking, you have to head over to patreon.com cool. slash geekbomb and sign up for any of the tiers to back. And if you do that and you join uh, Discord, you get instant access. If you need a hand, do a message. Rachel's on it. Amazing. Excited to see you there. This is going to be really good. Other Rach. There's a, there's a couple yeah. of Rachels. Yeah. Yes. And there's a couple of Hectors. It's confusing, but just join the Discord. No, it's but awesome. only it's one mod. Only one mod. The moderator. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Are there That's mods it. though? Hmm. Yeah, I have mods. I have mods, mods. Um, excited for you to keep reading this book. Remember, stop at 33. Read up to chapter 33. Read all of chapter 32. Talk to me about it online. I'm so excited to hear you um, and your thoughts on this, but we're going to head over to the after show right now. See you next week. Yes, Rach? See you there. Also, True Scorn said, good night, Raven, Morgan, and Hank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll All take it. Goes. Bye.